In our last video, we discussed how we could able to write a simple API test using Playwright with c .net. And in this video, we are going to see how we could write a better API test code with Playwright with c .net. But just that, we are not going to really use the Playwright object created in every test method. Rather, we also need to scaffold that as a library so that we could reuse across all the tests. Those things we are going to be doing in this particular video as well as the upcoming videos. But for now, let's first understand what application that we are going to basically test. So this is one of the GraphQL product app, which I have actually created for the REST Sharp testing course. And you can see that there is a GraphQL test, there is a REST Sharp demo writer test, as well as the REST Sharp spec flow test where you have got a lot of different ways to use uh, the rest sharp with the builder patterns and factory patterns and stuff. So it's completely for that particular course, but we are just going to make use of the application so that it makes my life easier to explain you what I'm really talking about. But as it said, this course is actually available in Udemy over here, the API testing with the rest sharp along with framework development. It actually has got all the details about how you could do the simple basic API test, advanced API test operation, refactoring to a framework and using the SpecFlow uh, web application factory integration, uh, GraphQL contract testings and stuff. That's about this particular course, but that's what this course source code is all about. And I will show you some of the similarities later on while we talk about the Playwright API testing with the REST Sharp, but that's not a big deal. We are going to focus mainly on the application under test. Let me run this application and I'll show you what I really mean. So once I run this particular application, this is going to show a lot of different controllers this time in this vlogger. And you can see that if I try accessing any one of the get products, for example, by using tryout, I'm actually going to be getting an error here. It says that the web authenticate uh, B error is EMT. So it's basically a 401 unauthorized error. And similarly, if I try getting a get product by ID by using one, I'm going to get the same sort of error. The reason being, you first of all need to authenticate yourself. So I have a authenticate operation over here. So you can just do a login um, and the username is going to be KK and the password, I believe it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And now if I try executing it, it's going to give me a bearer token as you can see. And this bearer token is what is required for me to be passed in the authorize with B error and then pass the token, something like that. And now if I try executing the same API that was not working before using the execute method, you will see that it's gonna show me all the different products coming up. And similarly, I can also get the product by name or ID, something like this. So this is all working because we have the authentication done over there. So this is the application's behavior. And the application under test actually uses an portable database, like a SQLite database, which has all the data of the user. And it also has a lot of controllers. It also has models for product, as well as the component. And there are some C data, which actually injects all the data that you just saw. So this is what is this application under test. Well, as I said, we are gonna automate this particular application right now. In order to do that, I'm gonna create a new project and as usual, it's going to be a test project, but this time it's going to be a Playwright API testing. And I'm going to choose X unit and the language as C sharp as usual. And over here, we need to install the Playwright NuGet package. So manage NuGet package and Playwright as well as the Fluent assertion. And once we have these two library, we can then start writing the code pretty much like how we did in our earlier video so i'm gonna do the exact same thing so i'm gonna copy paste that particular code over here and i'm gonna import the missing references and because this is gonna be an a sync a synchronous code so we need to use the async task and then i need to perform the rest of the operation but this time the application is not going to be the same application that we tested before so this is going to be of port number 5001 and since it is going to be an http uh, s application as well this property is going to be still relevant for this particular application as well which is good and now we are going to perform an authentication operation so i'm going to call this test as an authenticate test which is then going to help us to authenticate the whole application. So we'll see how we could able to uh, do the authentication operation. 
Well, if you notice that the authentication operation within the application is a post operation as opposed to the get operation that we saw in our earlier lecture. So the first thing to perform the post operation is going to be uh, the post async operation that we can get it from the playwright as usual. So for doing that, I'm going to say var response is equal to await of request dot post async. And within this post async, we need to pass the URL of the application. And the URL of the application is going to be this one. So I'm going to copy this whole URL and I'm going to paste it over here. And because we have a slash here, we don't really require a slash even here as well. That's about the login operation. And we also need to pass some of the credential information that we just saw, right? That is one of the other things that we need to do. So without passing the credential information that we just did on this particular API, which is going to be the username and password, this post operation is not going to work. So we need to pass the body. So how do I pass the body in the post operation of Playwright? Well, in order to do that, we are going to create put a comma there and you see that there is something called as an API request context option. So we can do the API request context option. So I'm just going to open and close this. And you see that once I hit control space, it's going to show me form, which is an iform data interface. There is a header, method, multi-part, param, timeout, data bytes, data object, data strings, fail on status code, ignore HTTPS error which is great. And the one which we really require is going to be the data object. So this data object allows to set post data of the request. So that is what we are going to be looking for. And the most important thing here is, which is amazing, is it will be serialized to JSON string and contact content type header will be set to application JSON if not explicitly set, which is also great because you do have to specify that in some of the other testing tools, but here you don't have to. Okay, so well, as that said, I'm going to use the data object property. And in this data object property, we need to pass the object, which is the one that we are looking for. And you can see that because this is going to expect a username and password, we could use an anonymous type, something like this. So within this anonymous type, I can specify the username uh, and the password. So this is the username and the password. So I'm going to say username, which was, I think, KK. And the password, I'm very sorry, I put a pretty much like a JSON representation. This is anonymous type. You don't have to put a double quotes there. And then for the password, you have to specify the password, which is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is an anonymous type in C Sharp. If you want to learn more about the anonymous type, just head over to C Sharp for automation testing playlist in YouTube. You can learn about that. But for now, yes, this is it. So I'm going to use this guy. So this is the data object, which has got the body being passed. And once I have it, I can then perform the post operation. So I'm going to once again get var. And I'm going to say JSON string. I'm going to get it which is going to be from a weight of the response dot JSON async, something like that. So that's going to give me the response. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here and I'm going to do a debug. So you can see that the response code is already 200, which is great. And now the response body should be coming up as well over here. And you can see that we have a token. So token and there is a token value coming up as well, which is great. So this is how we could able to get a response coming using a post operation. And we could able to do a simple authentication from this particular token. So we already have this particular object. And now we need to somehow deserialize this particular response so that we could able to obtain the token, which we can then pass as a header for the rest of the other API calls like get employee by name or ID, something like that, that we are going to be doing in our next lecture.